So we we definitely use social media at Andela um, as a business, obviously, primarily for marketing. Uh, and now that I talked about marketing, as a young person, social media could be one way that you could market yourself. Um, I, I, used, I used to tell uh, developers that I used to mention that your Facebook page or your Facebook uh, profile should be something you think a recruiter should see. Uh, should be something, it's your brand out there. If, uh, if your name is Joshua Kello, be Joshua Kello. Don't be, uh, you know his name, sir. Um, but yeah, that's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good marketing and branding tool, not for only businesses, but for you as an individual. In fact, uh, other networks like LinkedIn decided to focus entirely on professional, on your professional brand. But my, I personally believe that it should be the same fairly across all, all social media platforms. If you're an engineer on LinkedIn, be an engineer on Twitter, be an engineer on Instagram, be an engineer on, uh, on Facebook and all those platforms. So that's, uh, so that's one thing that you could use this uh, social media for. The second thing is uh, uh, business for yourself, really. Uh, who, who here knows uh, uh, about Facebook bots? Or bots generally. I'm not sure. Who knows about bots? So, um, so most of all, most of these social media companies are creating what you call bots. Uh, in layman's terms, bots are small programs uh, that do certain things well, yeah? uh, and they'll build an inter interactive interface around them. Uh, for example, uh, you could build a bot that sells stuff. In fact, there's a company right now at the Innovation Village. I thought we'd find some Innovation Village here. There's a company at the Innovation Village that actually specializes in that. If you have your, your business, they figure out how to use bots to sell on your behalf. And you are not there, uh, which means that uh, if you're running your small business, you don't have to hire very many people. Let the bots do it for you. Send people to your Facebook page. There will be a bot there that you ask that will ask the user, uh, "How are you?" You say, "I'm fine." Uh, what would you like to buy? I would like to buy this, and uh, it will take that input, figure out what exactly that you want, and give you ways of buying, paying for that particular product. Um, what have I missed out? So I talked about branding and also making doing your own business online. I, I can't think of anything else right now. But I think those are okay. those will be really important. Very, very important. Is that it? Social media. If you don't have a LinkedIn account today, make sure you get one. Very, very important. Make sure you have a LinkedIn account because uh, that's where you get jobs from, that's where you get connections from. It's a very professional network. I cannot tell you how many opportunities I've got from LinkedIn. Quite, quite very, very many. If you know how to do it, then you access a number of resources and opportunities. Yeah, I will go again to Odur, uh, opportunity of social media. Very huge opportunity. Uh, uh, Joshua has highlighted a few things about what social media can be done. But there's also the challenge of social media. I want you to briefly talk about an opportunity and a challenge. What do you see as a challenge of social media? What is challenging? What is the problem, and how can that be turned to an opportunity as well? I think one of the uh, biggest challenges with, uh, with social media is, is um, before social media, of course, I if I was if I told you I was Jack of Odoo, I was Jack of Odoo. Okay, yes, but um, you know after social media became a big thing. It's very possible that I could be Jack and uh, on the side I could be somebody else entirely. And one of the challenges with that is that now we have um, a lot of uh, fake personalities, right? And uh, these fake personalities are also two ways. There's also, of course, the human beings who are creating fake personalities. But then also it has provided an opportunity because they have realized that people are chasing being famous, people are chasing being uh, somebody. 
So what other people have also started doing is uh, creating uh, effect followers. So they have designed systems which are able to, you know, they're effect followers. You find uh, somebody owns a, a company in India, and what they're basically doing is just make sure that you accumulate as many Facebook followers as you would uh, want. So if you're relying on social media as a business, all right, if maybe I run an ad agency, and what I'm telling my clients is I'm going to help them promote their brand, now in this situation, if uh, somebody is also adding fake followers onto that, it means that if uh, Alan here has, uh, if Joshua has a business which relies on uh, people being able to buy from that platform, in this situation now, those people who we are thinking of buying from the platform are actually just a bunch of guys who are at the data center in India, then it means that <laughs> along the way, business is going to get lost. And uh, for all the three parties who are involved, obviously somebody is going to be making losses. The client is not going to be paying for any new followers which are not leading to sales. Fantastic. You've also mentioned very many fake profiles uh, you have to be aware of and, uh, and see how to do that. So, so an opportunity that he has um, talked about. I want to ask again, Muriat, uh, uh, the opportunity of social media. I will continue using innovations because Camtech is more into innovations. Yes, we support people to come up, you know, the innovations should go to commercialization, should be commercialized. So how social media helps the innovators and the business people is, as a Camtech, when teams form to come up with an innovation, we encourage them to open up social media platforms that should keep them together because that is one challenge that we had we have previously faced of keeping teams together so you find you're struggling to get people together you send maybe emails and you're the person doing it on their behalf but how about them within themselves communicating and make sure making sure that uh, you are one so this has really helped us to keep the teams together, but also open up opportunities. Because the person, if I'm, for example, on a WhatsApp group with you, the people I know may not be the people that you know. And when it comes to innovation and business, it's about networking. And social media does a great job in that. So it will help people network, it will help people connect to each other, and you know, share ideas. So you can't do without social media, and social media builds people, builds their capacities, and it creates also more skills. For example, if I have a skill that I want to share with my colleagues, we will have the, the skill share. If there is an opportunity of a grant, it's easy for these uh, innovators who have identified, or the business people who have identified uh, maybe an opportunity, for example, a call, to share it through. WhatsApp groups, Facebook accounts, so social media is really key in uh, making sure that people keep together and, you know, making sure that businesses move fast. I've seen people who are advertising products on, on Facebook. I've been a beneficiary of some, like you are in, in Barara, you're looking, you, you look at, for example, someone marketing dresses or some other products and they are based in Kampala but they will make sure that that product gets to you in a few you know, days or even in a day, as long as you pay. So social media is very important in this. Fantastic. Social media is very, very important uh, to keep groups together for communication, uh, for doing business. I remember in the year 2013, uh, we helped such a, a tailor here in Parara. He had a business uh, making retention this local clothing. I'm set up a Facebook profile for him, a website, and his sales since then have just skyrocketed. He all his clients are basically British and uh, people from the West because he has a Facebook profile that is up to date. He showcases his work and they keep referring others and others and others and it's it's very fantastic what the internet can do. However there is a lot of challenges that people have highlighted about the internet. One, the cost is very, very expensive, and people cannot afford it. Two, the computer literacy, and people don't know how to use, um, they, they don't know how to use computers, so when you go sophisticated apps, 
sometimes they cannot use them. I want to dive into the challenges um, of the internet and uh, technology, and I want the panelists to dive into these. I will ask Maria to begin. What are some of the challenges that you see that a young entrepreneur, a young businessman will, go, will face as they begin doing technology business, as they begin innovating? What are some of those challenges and what have you seen that works solve some of these challenges? Thank you. Of course, there are opportunities that we have highlighted, but there are also many challenges with social media, to do with social media. First of all is the issue of time. Yes, we want to create businesses, but uh, for some of us who have worked with, uh, you know, get WhatsApp, for example. If you don't manage your time well, and you don't manage yourself, WhatsApp is good, but it depends on what you're doing with it. There are many groups that you want to join, but sometimes you fail to balance your time between what you're supposed to do. For example, if you have, you have a business, we have walked to shops where you find the shop attendant is concentrating on his phone, and they are not giving time to the customer. So in your mind, yes, you're also one of the beneficiaries, but you're thinking, is this person taking me for granted? And you will walk to the next show. When it comes to innovation, you need time to get to the internet and the social media, but you need time to do some other activities that are off the internet or social media. So how do you balance that, which we are failing to do sometimes, as the young people have said, because most innovators are people who are you know, in the youth, bracket uh, according to any definition that you would want to take. So balancing the time is one issue between the time that you give to social media and internet activities and the time that you give to work that is offline. Two is the fake personalities that he, he, my colleague mentioned. So you need to really be careful with uh, what you interface on the internet, uh, who you interface with, and the information that we get. There's a lot of information on the internet, but it's up to you as an individual, the beneficiary, to pick out what you think you really want and what you think is right. Uh, three is, uh, there, there are many issues, I think. I will leave the rest to my colleagues. I think they are more experts in the internet area. <laughs> than I do, but those are the two that I would highlight for now. Yeah, we'll go to the discussion. What are the challenges uh, that a young person who is innovating will, will face, and what have you seen that works, and what advice will you give them? I'll just pick just it all from there, and uh, uh, to show you can just pick on from there. OK, thank you. So uh, luckily, I made a list. Huh? Um, so, for, for some background, maybe you might wonder why I, you know, I have the right to tell you about what you're going to go through. Before I went to Mandela, I, uh, I spent my, uh, my first years in software engineering, uh, building startups, uh, something around nutrition, I had a startup around, uh, you know, Seth Border? So, Seth Border and a similar product that I had built launched the same month, March 2015. Um, uh, but mostly people know me for uh, Wing Sengo, which is a mobile based ultrasound alternative. So I've been, I've walked, I've walked the journey and I've learned quite a number of things. Uh, not only here, but I've been lucky to, to learn it here and on one or two other continents. So if you are, if you are here, if you're based in this environment now, and you want to start a business uh, that's an innovation and it's, it's, you know, it's technology based. Uh, these are some of the challenges that I think you face and I'll, uh, I'll also give you some, in my experience, some of the solutions I think that are there uh, or the ones that you could, uh, you could run with. So the very first one is talent. Um, Uganda has a shortage of ideas. We have ideas, um, really cool ideas. The problem is execution. Uh, this, ex this execution usually uh, requires talent. If you, if you do not know about computers, for example, 
if you're not going to be able to build it. But the person that uh, will build it, you, know, you have to pay them a sizable you know, amount of money, if you're lucky. Uh, if, however, you're building something that is out of this world, then chances are you're not going to get that local talent here. Uh, my own example, um, when we started building with Senga, uh, we're doing signal processing. I had no idea about signal processing. Uh, I, was in, I was in year one at university, but I knew this would work. Uh, two or three years down the road, still no one available to do it. Uh, you have to rely on someone abroad, someone in Australia or Russia. Uh, another example, do you guys know Brick? Brick from IHUB. Okay, so Brick is a, a router that is built in Africa. Uh, and I remember I was on a panel sometime back and his biggest problem at the time was he could not find a radio frequency engineer anywhere on the continent. So you're going to, you're going to face some of those challenges. Uh, the other part of the talent, uh, apart from tech, is business. Uh, it's good to have ideas, but if you don't have the business mind, it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, but luckily, the business side of things is kind of easy to, to sort out. And how do you solve this for yourself? Uh, as a founder, as a owner of a business, you have to learn. Uh, it's like, uh, imagine you're a tailor who wants to become one day a, a, the biggest distributor of clothes. Eh? Let me use the example of uh, the tailor in Stockholm. Uh, when you're starting out, you need to learn every single Do it yourself. Uh, because by doing it, you learn. And by learning, you're, you're starting to streamline and standardize how you want things to be, to be run. Whoever you end up employing is going to run that very same course. Um, and, then, and there are opportunities for you to learn. Um, Andela, uh, and partly that's the reason why I'm at Andela, we realize there are lots of brilliant people here who, who are brilliant, but they don't have the opportunities to learn how to be good software engineers, and not only learn, but also practice. Uh, most of our clients in soft, uh, uh, most of our clients or partners are in the Silicon Valley area for a reason. That is the cutting edge of technology and software engineering in the world. So to be, and then it's creating that opportunity that you are able to practice your craft with the best of the best, right? Uh, but also on your own, he mentioned EDX, and again, the power of the internet. You know, take your time, go learn these things. There's nothing you want to learn that is not online. Seriously. Uh, the second challenge that you're going to face is around adoption. Uh, in two ways. So. You know, Uganda, in Uganda we have this um, mindset that if it's made in Uganda, it's not good. Huh? And I'm sure you've seen these things. You walk into a supermarket, you find uh, Mokene made here, and you're like, no, 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 no. I want to get the one made in Kenya. Because you don't trust that what you're building here is good enough. Um, but also, if you're building a. Uh, the, uh, the, the, other, the tech side of things, like you mentioned as well, is that people are largely unaware of. Uh, the internet and how to use it and these apps and all these things. Uh, and my solution, my ideas around that is, in terms of adoption, that is a tough one. It's going to take a while because it's a behavioral change thing. It doesn't happen like that. It's going to take a while. Ask, you know, pushing and pushing and pushing. If you have, if you have 100,000 unique uh, locally made products in, this, in our supermarkets, people are going to have no other choice but to buy them. And when you buy it, you find it's good and slowly like that. The, about tech awareness, um, I honestly think that value, uh, people, people invest in things that give them value. I'll give an example. A, a tomato seller, just in the street there, is probably using WhatsApp, using the internet. But that is, she's only using it because she doesn't know what else, what other value she could get from using this very simple one of us. Uh, before I came from, I used to work at uh, the UN, and we did a project in Kanungu, giving midwives smartphones. They had used smartphones before, some had not, but allowing a midwife to be able to monitor, to uh, keep track of her patients, to do all these small things, change the way you know healthcare is being delivered there, and adoption actually increased. Uh, the third thing is funding. Uh, as you know, it's, uh, it's really difficult to raise funding here if you want, and I'm sure uh, Jacob and someone will attest to this. Um, it's difficult to raise funding here, and for many reasons. Um, 
people don't really believe in this, but it's also technology. We come from a generation, we're in a generation where the people who have the money are in a generation that doesn't believe in technology. So my father, my own father would give me money to go and uh, do maize. Because he knows he can count what? The sacks, like, okay, so 50 sacks is the profit I'm going to get. But you're telling him, I'm uh, doing ice streams, I tell you what, those things that you cannot touch. He's not, we are paying here. He's not going to, he's not going to spend money on that. How we survived with, how we survived with my other startups, unfortunately, was to find money elsewhere. Grant money. There's, there are lots of, like, uh, um, Nuria T was saying, there's lots of grant money out there. A fintech has survived a lot of this, and if you get one grant, you make it work. Get another one, the, the word goes out. It's not, a, it's not a coincidence that fintech or agriculture technology is hot right now. It's because of this grant. Someone gave a grant, they saw the results, and hey, the thing works, someone act from here, and now we have this whole movement of people investing in agriculture technology and financial technology. Um, and then, of course, uh, there are incubators, you know, the likes of Outbox or whatever, who have other ways of funding. The last thing I want to talk about is intellectual property. So you've gone through all these problems, you've hustled, like we say, in our generation, um, and then someone comes and steals your idea, most because you did not, uh, you did not patent it or protect it in any way. So there's always a dilemma as, as an innovator. For you to be able to get people to listen to you, you need to share a little bit about what your innovation is. But if you share a little bit about your innovation is, some guy in China, uh, no offense, uh, is going to get that idea, add one and one, and get two, and manufacture it. And for you, you're here, you're still trying to get to the two, but you know, he has moved that side. How, what I've seen, and what we also did was uh, two things. So we say three. So the WIPO, the World Intellectual Property Organization, has, I think it's free for Uganda in particular. Go online, register. It will take care of it as long as you have your, uh, your idea sorted out. They have a, Uganda is one of the companies that are exempted from that, and WIPO will do it for you. If you have some money, the next best thing, and this is international, the next best thing would be the USPTO, uh, the US United States Patent Office. The third one, locally here, and luckily for us, uh, URSP, uh, the Uganda Registration Services Bureau, right? Uh, they have they have an entire department that is de dedicated to finding local IP and helping you find it. For as low as, I think, the trademark will go for 50K, um, uh, I think if you want to do a patent, they also give you some um, discounts here and there. But for me, what excites me is that many years ago, 2012, 2013, when I was doing Winsenga, we did not have a patent examiner in Uganda. If you wanted your patent to be examined, you'd go to, I think his name is Isaac. Uh, uh, Isaac Brutenberg. You go to Nairobi, he examines it, and then you go all the way to Zimbabwe, at the Aripo, and get that and get that second, so to speak. Now we did Uganda. We have a we have a patent examiner, so you don't have to go to Nairobi. You don't, you know, you basically go to RSP. They will know what to do uh, for you. Uh, that's uh, that's basically it from my own uh, my own experience. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, he has mentioned very many things. Mm -hmm. eh? I hope you have noted down. He said you will note the aha moments, mm -hmm. very realistic challenges. Everyone faces them, and, um, and uh, we hope that we can get some solutions and some ideas on how to go around these things on this uh, summit. I will go again to Jacob. Um, challenges to innovation, uh, opportunities. How can we turn the challenges to uh, to opportunities? And uh, what do you see in that area? 